Welcome to Boots, your go-to for all things women's soccer. I'm Trista, and today we're thrilled to have a special guest, Francesca Alley, a star midfielder from AFC Wimbledon. And I actually had played with Fran in Wyoming. Fran is a long-term friend of mine and is here to share her insights and experiences. I personally am so excited to have her on because she is easily one of the best players I've ever played with. Fran's vision and knowledge on the field are truly beautiful, so let's lace up and dive in. Lace up, lasers. Let's go. Okay, hello. I guess we can um, talk about what what we've all been up to lately. Um, and then also, we're introducing a guest on Boots today. And our guest is Fran, Francesca Alley from London. Um, Fran, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so uh, my name is Francesca Alley, um, Fran for short. Um, I play football for Wimbledon and I played soccer uh, with Trista um, in college in the United States. Yay. Cool. Welcome. Wait, for this podcast, can I call it football or do I have to call it soccer? Football, totally fine. (laughs) Football's fine. (laughs) Especially especially because we're going to be talking about um, your experience. So it would be really hard to just do this. (laughs) (laughs) So um, what, what were you all up to this weekend? What were we doing? I could start. Um, I spent all of my weekend painting. So I just moved house, Franny, just back from the US. Um, oh. so bought a new house. And so every wall is like this beige, lovely color. And so we've been spending the whole weekend painting our bedroom. Oh, I've noticed you've got a bit of a, a, um, a mixture of an accent, Katie. Do I? <laughs> yeah. Does it mix? What do you think it is? Um, well, I've done some digging myself. Um, you spent some time in Scotland, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm from Scotland. You are from Scotland, but did you? So you moved to the states? Yeah. And so that's where I, you met Kylie. Yeah, I moved about five years ago. Um, with work, I moved to California. I was there for about two years over COVID, mostly, and then I moved to Houston, Texas, for two and a half. And I obviously work with Kylie at Chevron, so uh, managed to hang out with Kylie a ton. And then through Kylie, I met Trista because we all liked football. Oh, amazing. Okay. Yeah. And now you're back in Scotland as of like... And now I'm back in Scotland. Yes. Yep. Amazing. So Katie was painting. Um, I yesterday- was. Yesterday... Yesterday, Kylie and I were playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, which Sorry, what does that is, consist of? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's like a really big game that is, oh gosh, Kylie's going to be better at explaining Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost, it's like a big role playing game. You're given a character you're traversing through some kind of world as them and you're have different character traits um, and you're good at certain things and not as good at certain things. So for example, I'm a druid elf. So I am a, an elf in our campaign and I can also like transform into animals. I can cast a few spells uh, and <laughs> Um, Trista is a halfling bard, so a halfling is a... Like a half person? Three foot person. Um, and then Not a bard me. is a <laughs> pocket sized human, yes. yes. <laughs> pocket size. <laughs> uh, and Trista makes up songs typically that give us like inspiration and boost our scores. Um, oh. She's come up with some good ones. She That's a good mixes trait for Eye Trista. Of the tiger. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes. And like our whole goal it is dependent on like the dungeon master in the game that they're like there's one person in the group that 
kind of knows what's going on and has to guide the rest of the group through it. Um, and so we have like different tasks and different goals that we need to complete in order to actually like finish the game. But one thing I didn't know when I started playing Dungeons Dragons with Kylie and her friends was how long it takes to complete a game. Like for instance, we've been playing the same game, like the same game. I don't even know for maybe Campaign. like a total of, okay, that's what it's called for maybe a total of what? Like 40 hours now, I would say 50, maybe. Oh my <laughs> I don't know. Like combined. Yeah. Wow. It lasts a long time. And it's because you have to like, partly because we play with people who, when we all get together, we're also catching up, but then also it's, you have to be really creative and it's, there's so many things that go into the game. So anyway, that's Dungeons and Dragons. Um, And we played it yesterday for like five hours or six hours um, into the night. And we also had a lot of wine. Oh, (laughs) nice. Nice, can't do it without a bit of wine. Yeah. Do you role play, or do you have like little characters that you move around, like, or do you kind of act out? Both voice act out, and then we move our characters on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Do you put yeah, on like a funny voice? Me... For sure, you can. I don't. Yeah. I... Okay. Okay. <laughs> Kylie's character's voice is the same as Kylie's voice, but I they make me sing, so I definitely Okay. <laughs> I yeah. have to do that. Yeah. Okay. Fran, what did your weekend look like? Um to be honest, I got back from football an hour ago. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday I was just it was just sort of like a chill one um, for me before uh, playing. So it's, it was our first game back uh, since the Christmas break. So there was a lot of tired legs out there today, um, but we managed to get the win. We won seven two, so very good win. Yeah, nice job. What? Yeah, That's doing, amazing. Yeah, we're doing pretty well. We're we're top of the league um, at the moment, so we're hoping. In the next few months, um, we are going to be champions, hopefully. Um, obviously, there's a lot of work to do, but yeah, we're, we're doing really well at the moment. Okay, so can you explain to us the your league and how the tiers of leagues work yeah. in general? Um, so I play in the fourth tier um, of women's football here in England. Um, it's pretty decent standard. Um, that is, so basically it's the, oh, I've got to get this right, the FA Women's National League South East Division. Um, <clears throat> and then the same tier, we've got a South West Division. Whoever wins my division and the Southwest Division go up into just the South. Um, and then there's a, a South and a North. Um, so South of England, North of England. Um, and then whoever wins that goes up to the championship, which is semi-pro kind of professional now, to be honest. Um, and then from the championship, whoever wins that, gets promoted into the Women's Super League, which I'm sure you're probably familiar with. Wow. That yeah, is, so... That's so crazy. Yeah, it's... Do you know what? It, women's football has just come on leaps and bounds in the last five to ten years here. Um, and it's been interesting for myself to, to see how much the game has actually grown. Um, because, you know... I kind of envy, you know, the youngsters of today because like, the, the young girls that are coming through because, you know, at 16, you know, they're thinking to themselves, I could make a career out of, of being a, a female footballer. Whereas, you know, although I, I wasn't even good enough, but I mean, if I was, I mean, I couldn't even, <laughs> I couldn't even picture myself, you know, earning a living or, you know, a stable wage you know, playing football, um, which is amazing for, for the girls of today. And it's 
amazing to see how much the game has actually grown. Um, but the, the, the transition from, from when I started senior football to now is just absolutely crazy. And the standard is just getting better and better. That's amazing. What's so mm-hmm. interesting too, I think, is that <clears throat> that doesn't really exist in the US. Like we don't have tiers and that's all in just like England. And we just have the National Women's Soccer League. It's just one one league that you can wow. join to be a professional. Yeah, and like there are like other kind of smaller leagues that you can join, but it's definitely not as big as it is in England. So even I remember um, when you went back to England and were playing professionally, it was so confusing because it's like that doesn't exist here, like in the U.S. <laughs> when there's so it's so big, like in terms of how many people are here and um, like space wise. So you don't have like any leagues feeding into the top division. Wow. No, no, they don't. Yeah. Wow, that is just crazy to me. So how many divisions are there in your only tier, the, the top tier? How many divisions are there? Is it split regionally? No. No. It's nope, just, nope, how just many, one. How many teams? There's like, is there 12 teams? 12 now, I think. Yeah, yeah there's like so- 12 total teams, but there's no like divisions. Wow. Yeah, and there's no relegation, Fran, either. Like, mm-hmm. it's just your bottom of the league, right? Nothing happens, and then they play the next season. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that is weird. And what I, I know, when I came to the United States, what I noticed was that um, you don't have any, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you probably do, but to play at a very good standard between the ages of 18 and 22, I think it is, you've got to play college football, right? It's not sort of dependent on the academy that you play for. Oh, definitely So say, not. oh, you Houston could get Dash, drafted. right? Mm-hmm. Say that again, Kylie? You could get drafted, bef- instead of going to college, you could go straight into NWSL, but... Um, that doesn't happen yeah. as often. There's a college yeah. draft that happens. Yeah, that's that's changed. Like that's something that's newer. I think that's different, especially because the uh, women's soccer leagues, like professional leagues here ha- in the United States, they have not um, always been successful. So we've had leagues, and then they've fallen out. And then there's been periods of time where we haven't had um, like stable leagues. So the most, like the best way to um, succeed is probably through the avenue of college, but now it's becoming a little bit more um, common to see younger players getting drafted into the NWSL earlier on. Like, uh, for instance, Gis- Giselle Thompson, Alyssa Thompson, they're 18 years old. Um, that Barcena is playing at, like at 15 years old. So we're seeing that more and more, like younger players just jumping straight into the professional leagues instead of going through the avenue of college. But traditionally, and like in the past, that's that is the way to like mm-hmm. get into professional soccer here. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, and, I, I I really do like uh, the way it works in the United States because <clears throat> in order to succeed on the field, you've got to succeed in the classroom as well. Um, and that's something that I feel in England, you know, we've, we've fallen short on. You know, you get a lot of, you see it more in the men's game, I think. You, you get a lot of players with a lot of ability, a lot of potential, um, and have been told through throughout their all, all of their youth that they're going to make it as a professional footballer. So they slack off in the classroom. Um, and then, yeah. you know, unfortunately, you know, because it's so hard to be a professional footballer here and um if they don't make it you know they don't really have anything to fall back on whereas I think the US have it absolutely right you know um if things don't work out as an athlete you know you've got a degree or you know something to to fall back on that is so interesting so um one thing we were all wondering too was what was your career path or what was your experience leading into uh, where you are now in terms of um, playing football, in terms of where you've landed on the team that you're on 
what what has that path looked like um so i started i, I started playing football with i've got a, a twin brother and um i started playing football with him because i basically had no choice um so we, we joined um we was both well he was already there he he played for a, a boys team and i used to always want to be playing um and in the end i joined and I played there for a couple of seasons and then I got picked up by uh, Millwall Lionesses. Um, so I got scouted, if you like. And Cool. Yeah, they invited me to a trial and then I went there and I got through and I was there for between the ages of 13 and 17. Um, and then I joined uh, another club um, called Charlton Athletic. And I joined them because basically they was at the time they was in a lower league than Millwall, um, and I was sixteen and I kind of wanted to just experience senior football, um, and I wasn't going to get first. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't going to get first team football at Millwall Lionesses because they, they were playing at a really good standard. Um, so to get minutes and experience at senior football, I I, I sort of set set down to, to Charlton. And uh, we had a really successful season, actually. We ended up um, winning the league. Um, and then after that, that was when I came out to the States um, for two years. And that's where I met Trista, actually. Um, and we played for L Triple C, didn't we, Trista? Yes, sure did. In Wyoming, which is, okay, how did you, and I know we've talked about this, but you have to Wow, talk. you were in Wyoming? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Our I get this college, all the time. I know, but you have to tell you have to tell everybody else. So our um, our college was L Triple C, which stands for Laramie County Community College in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Obviously, I grew up in Wyoming, so it wasn't weird that I landed there. But <laughs> we had a lot of very very talented international players actually, and we were really successful um, at the college. And Fran was for two years. But uh, how did you end up there? <laughs> Um, do you know what our, our coach um, Jim Gardner he had he well he has a lot of contacts in um, soccer in collegiate soccer and um, one of my coaches at Millwall said you know I know someone at um, in Wyoming I think I was I, no I, I was supposed to go to uh, UMass University of Massachusetts um, and I was talking to the coach there and something happened with my eligibility because basically, long story short, at 16, at the time, you could have left school and gone and worked. And that's exactly what I did. I just went straight into work, which is crazy like for you guys, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because um, <laughs> you can't just walk into a job at the age of 16, like... So, yeah, so I did that. So I, I, I took a year out of uh, my studies, um, but that ended up costing me my eligibility to play NCAA um, over in the States. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. So the only college that I could play for was a community college. So that's when the UMass coach contacted Gardner and... Um, at L Triple C, um, and to be honest, <laughs> the first thing I did was type in Wyoming in Google, right? And I was just thinking, oh my god, this is so different to London. This is gonna like, this is crazy, right? Because it, it was just fields, and there was a few pictures of like buffaloes, and <laughs> um, but yeah, and then, but I just thought to myself, do you know what? If I didn't like it, I could just jump on a plane back home and, you know, get on with, with my life here. But I thought to myself that I don't want to miss an opportunity and, and look back and maybe have some regrets. So I <laughs> flew out to Wyoming, well, um, Denver. And the drive from the drive from Denver to Cheyenne is very, like, flat, isn't it? It's just like... Oh, yes. It's a bit of an awful drive. And... <laughs> Everyone, so basically, that was when our coach picked everybody up from the airport that was flying in that was international students. And all of them were just speaking Spanish to one another. And I was just thinking, 
Oh my god! Like, I don't understand a word. Um, do I need to learn Spanish? <laughs> you would never think that, right? Going to Wyoming. Exactly. Yeah, I was just like, this is like because yeah, I was just, I just yeah, I couldn't believe. I mean, it's, it was amazing because, like, like I say, we got to meet so many different people from from different walks of life and we still speak to them now and um, on Instagram and stuff like that and get to see, you know, how their lives have, have panned out. But yeah, I mean, at the time I was just thinking, oh my God, I'm going to need to learn Spanish. <laughs> um, <laughs> and at that, like, I got to the, the college and it was just really dark because nobody had turned up yet. So there was no student athletes, no students. And I was just thinking, oh, what have I done? What have I actually done? <laughs> um, and then I woke up the, the, the next morning and uh, that was when like everybody came together and um, the thing is what, what I love about football so much is that I feel like it is another language do you know what I mean the minute you get onto the pitch and you're all playing together you're yeah. interacting um, and I think that's probably when we had our first training session I think that was when I was like you know what I, I quite like this and um I met like obviously all of like the girls and they were all great and all the all of the coaches as well and what I will say about the people of Wyoming is that they are just the most friendliest people I have ever met just so friendly and so welcoming um couldn't understand my accent from time to time but we, we got through it <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no i I ended up absolutely loving it. I just had the time of my life and I look back now and just smile at all of the memories I've got. And um, you were also really successful at LCCC in Wyoming. So the first year when you and I had played together, we went to nationals and I can't remember where we placed, but it was, that was really cool. It was in Florida. And then the yeah. second year, I think y'all did even better. Do you remember? Yeah, we got to the uh, semi-finals at Nationals. So we came third. Oh. Yeah, so that was really cool. That's amazing. That's yeah. really cool. So what did you study at college there? Um, I was studying uh, theatre at the time. Um, cool. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I just thought maybe I have, I have a natch for the stage, but <laughs> that's not where I'm at now. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to say that, so that's cool. <laughs> but what was nice yeah. about going to nationals was that um, obviously we, we played in Florida and it was in November, I think it was. So obviously Wyoming is just so cold around that time, windy, snowy. So to jump on a plane to Florida and just experience that um, southern sunshine was just really, really nice. Awesome. Yeah. Do you, do you have any favorite memories with Trista uh, from that time period? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, listen, we had some really, really good times, didn't we, Trist? Um, did you know yeah. what? I thought I really enjoyed E-Days when, we, when I actually met you, Kylie. E-Days was yeah. brilliant. Um, was so and fun. I wasn't expecting really it to be as fun as what it was. It was just, yeah, I was kind of blown away by that. Um, what is an E-Day? So E-Days is... At my college, uh, I went to college in Golden, Colorado, at the Colorado School of Mines. It's more of an engineering school, so it was called Engineering Days, but it's ah. about two to three days we get off school, and we get bands that come in. I think that year was AWOL Nation came in, um, and we're just um, having a really good time for three days. Yeah. It's that, okay. is, <laughs> that is the that nicest way she could have put that. Yeah. <laughs> is that because your mum might listen <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gotcha yeah. I think I remember some stories that you told me of your past that I'll just think it's some days now yeah <laughs> okay uh, something um, that I okay so I was watching um, a, a, a I'm, I'm watching the boys which has uh, an English like character in it and he always says oi and one thing that I remember is just like terrorizing our dorms, just like shouting oi like at the top of our lungs for some reason to find each other. And that recently came back to me when I was watching that show. 
Oh my oh, god, yeah. Oh. Just so loud. So in in classic like eighteen year old fashion, like I would never do that now because it was so obnoxious. But we had a really good time doing that. It's actually so rude. Like it actually <laughs> is so rude. But I don't know. I guess it was just my way of getting the, the Spanish girls' attention. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> That was your way of getting anyone's attention. Oh, just so loudly, anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah. And we would I all, mean- like, shout it back <laughs> in the middle of the hallway in the dorms, like, where people are, like, living and sleeping and probably hating our guts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. I-, I had some really, really good times on the field in the U.S., but I've really enjoyed the parties you know the college parties and i spent a lot of time um second semester of my uh sophomore year traveling to laramie to go and see tris um because you lived there didn't you <laughs> yes and you also um learned how to country dance right during that period oh of time? my god i did <laughs> i love that that was so much fun it's a lot of work. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's a lot of work. But yeah, it was yes. really, really good. Really good fun. Oh, so so much fun. Yeah, I also um, your 21st birthday recently came back to me too. Um, <laughs> I was <laughs> remembering like going out downtown in Denver, like for Fran's birthday, and we were like a group of girls, and we were literally just a a total mess. And it's really funny because we're all still friends today, but we're reflecting back on that. We're like, it, and that was when our, you know, your frontal lobe isn't fully developed. So when you get a fully frontal or fully developed frontal lobe, you're like, oh my God, I was an idiot. But being an idiot was so fun. It really was. It was so much fun. Do you know what was quite interesting as well, Tris? When I, when I um, came back over um, a few months ago, we, we all went back out in Denver and I was thinking, oh my God, we was here nine years ago celebrating my 21st it's just gone so quickly yes <laughs> and we didn't get kicked out of any clubs like a couple months ago so that was that was a plus that was, yeah that was i was about to say <laughs> you talk about my 21st because we remember things very differently <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. oh, friend what did your football career le- look like when you came back after the U.S., being in the U.S.? Um, so I went back to um, Mill Lionesses, which is where I started, and they were in the second tier at the time. So it's the equivalent of the women's championship now. Um, so that was quite a decent standard. Um, required a lot of travelling, though, um, and I was working at the time as well. So it was just... Yeah, it was it was a lot. Um, then I ended up moving to Crystal Palace, who was in, a th- oh, it was in the fourth tier at the time, so two divisions below Millwall. Um, and again, it was just to enjoy football. Um, and then we ended up winning the league, and that was great. That was a lot of fun, actually. Um, and then from there, where did I go? Played for a lot of like. London teams. Um, so from Palace, where did I go? Oh, I went to. I think I went back to. Oh, no, I went to Leighton Orient, which is a, a team um, again in a lower division. But then, what really, really helped me, and it's crazy to to think back to it now. But lockdown really helped me. So um, back in twenty twenty, oh, so I have like a decent technical ability, right? But I am not someone that likes to run (laughs) at all. Um, But in lockdown, you know, what else was there to do but like go out for walks or go out for runs? So I ended up getting myself really, really fit. Um, And I thought to myself, do you know what? Like I might give it a go, like give it a go with, with my football again. So then I joined um, Watford, uh, well, I trialled at Watford and ended up getting in. And at the time, they was in the third tier um, and we got promoted into the second tier, which is the championship now. Um, 
and that was a lot. I was there for three seasons, and that was a lot of fun. And that was um, a team that I, for the first time, was. I would consider. I would have considered myself a semi-pro f- footballer because I was actually on wages, kind of thing. Um, so that was really, really good. That was a brilliant experience. That's something I would never forget. You know, I was playing at really, really nice stadium so Watford Stadium Vicarage Road that was really really fun um and then again it's like it's just difficult because when you're playing at that standard it's so we have to train three to three three times a week and then match days on a Sunday so it's a lot of dedication when you're working full-time as well um which effectively made me uh, have to step away from Watford. And that's why I sort of um, came to Wimbledon, um, obviously in the fourth tier. Um, So Watford are currently in the the second tier. And uh, they were a really, really good side, really good side. And um, besides from the fact that, you know, it was a lot of commitment and stuff, um, to play at that standard, you've got to be very, very good. And... um, I'm probably playing at my standard at the moment. Oh, and I will say, Fran is literally one of the best soccer players I've ever played with, for sure, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Your technical Thanks, ability Chris. is unmatched. It's amazing. It's phenomenal to watch you play or play with you. So oh, that's, that's really cool that you're also still playing and still really enjoying um, playing and like here and there I'll play like pickup games or things like that. And soccer is just one of those things that it just brings you so much joy. Um, What is like one of your favorite parts about actually playing soccer? Like play, like what are, as a player, what do you enjoy most? Um, What I love about it is the fact, and I'm sure you can all probably agree with this, whether you're playing football, whether you're watching it for though, for that 90 minutes, you're not thinking about anything else. Everything else just goes out the window and um, you're just focused on playing well for your team and hopefully getting three points. And that for me is just, even when I'm training, you know, when when I'm training um, and you're around everybody and, you you know, this banter just sort of like flowing. And um, yeah, for me, I I think it's, it's having that, release if, if you like you don't have to worry about work or anything like that you know you just go to football you, you play to have fun be around uh, people that you like and um yeah just enjoy it and another thing for me is like i'm a very social person so to be around people to crack jokes with everybody um, one of my favorite parts of match days is being in the dressing room with everybody because you know the music is blaring it's a really good atmosphere everybody's excited you know your adrenaline is sort of like rushing through your body um, so yeah I'd say that that's my most favorite what about you Tris what's one of my favorite things <clears throat> yeah uh, one of my favorite things about playing is just how creative um, you get to be or how other people get to be and you get to see that like somebody yeah. might do something like amazing or like the, there, there'll be a connection of like six or seven passes and it was just beautiful like I think yeah. soccer is one of those sports that's truly beautiful to watch and it's always that always looks different um, yeah. and yeah. so that's one of my favorite things about playing especially now because I I, I didn't play for a long period of time. I've had so many different injuries. So I think I just value what the actual game is more now than I ever did before. Um, and it's, I just think it's, that's, that's thing, one thing that I really enjoy. I also, I'm not, I'm not somebody who just loves like going out and running either. So I like that. It's like something physical that I can do um, with people that I like as well. And it also, it's also fun because like in your mind you can think about different things that you want to do or I don't know, like before you get the ball, you're, you're looking around, you're doing this and you can create so many, so many different plays and like, I don't know. It's just a, it's a beautiful game. And now I appreciate that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, Katie, what do you think? What's one of your favorite things about playing? Um, yeah, just, I think like the banter, like the camaraderie in the team um, and just seeing, like you said, people doing like pretty amazing things or different tricks and scoring goals and just, I like team games. I'm a big team player, even at work. Like I believe like you're most successful when you work together, right? Um, always being a big team player. So I just kind of like getting fit with people and having a laugh, right? They do something stupid, winding them up <laughs> <laughs> and making memories, right? With people and friends. So do you still play Katie? No, I haven't played since I was like early 20s and I'm like late 30s now. So I gave up um, when I was at uni okay. and I was partying too much and <laughs> too hungover <laughs> for the weekend games. <laughs> but I wish been. I kept it up better, to be fair. Mm. No, I was going to say, you could probably find like a, a team, um, like a, a vets team maybe that you could join. I probably so could, yeah. Back. Yeah. I would like to. I, I just kind of need to find the time in my schedule, right, to yeah. make it happen. But I definitely – it's something I've thought about. Yeah. Oh, cool. Over to you, Kylie. <laughs> I've played three times now. One time, Yay! actually. <laughs> and it was fun. I like just running around and hanging out with Trista, but yeah. <laughs> no, I, th I thought that you guys knew each other from soccer. No, was so it Kylie, and I, Kylie and I know each other from growing up together um, in uh, in our hometown, and, but we've known each other about since middle school, yeah, and Kylie grew up doing, uh, you want to say, the sports that you played? Oh, sure. Uh, so, yeah, first met Trista playing basketball, actually. Our lockers were right next to each other because her last oh. name starts with F and I'm a B, and <laughs> no one was in between. Um <laughs> And then, yeah, so basketball, I grew up playing. And then I also grew up playing softball, mainly. And then I've played, like, lacrosse. And I think that's it. Oh, and tennis. I've played tennis. Yeah. Oh, you're quite athletic and, then, uh, Kylie. <clears throat> yes. And Kylie played she is. when you moved here. Didn't you play flag football or something like that as well? Oh, uh, I loved flag football down here, yeah. That was really fun. Wow. I played a lot of flag football when I moved to Houston. And I haven't played it since, essentially, pandemic. Everything kind of stopped, and I haven't joined another league. And that was really fun. Yeah. But Kylie's um, start, her interest for women's soccer came kind of, like, recently. We started going to the Dash Games together, which is the Houston um, professional team here. And now Kylie is a um, season ticket holder. So <laughs> going to wow. every single game. Yeah, yeah. Is it a good we atmosphere are, there? It's pretty good. It's pretty fun. That's all right. Mm. Yeah. It's growing. I think, like, it could be so much better because Houston is such a diverse city, and mm -hmm. there's so many people that I think are more passionate about soccer here than there are in other cities. So it surprises me how little, like, of a fan base that it seems – I, I don't know. It just seems like it could definitely be better with the type of city that Houston is. But we really enjoy going. Um, and then yeah. hopefully their marketing team. I'm just kidding. I don't know why there's why there's a problem. But hopefully it can grow. <laughs> um, but but Kylie's a fan now. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. We've got the some of the CONCACAF games are going to be in Houston, which is super exciting as well. So Tristan and I will get to go see, I think, Canada play and oh, some other cool. games yes. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, in February we're going to go to those games in Houston, which is exciting. Yeah. So do do Houston Dash? Do they have their um? Do they do they have their own stadium? Yep. So they share they it with share the men's. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. So they've got a men's team stadium. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. The Houston Dynamo are the men's team, and they share it with the men's team. Oh, cool. They are also under the same. They're all owned by the same company i guess yeah that's not they're not separate which is i think in a lot of the other cities they're separate there's just a women's team owned by somebody and maybe a men's team there's no togetherness mm -hmm. there but the dash and dynamo are both owned under the same company 
Okay. Yeah. And it's cool because women's soccer here has also like grown a lot. Like they've just expanded two new teams for next season in the NWSL. Um, mm-hmm. And there's talks for another team, Boston, I think, or something like that for the, for the following year. So it's definitely growing, which is really exciting. And then Kansas City Current, they're the first team to open up their own women's soccer facility and their own women's soccer stadium, which is amazing. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that is amazing. Yeah, because I don't think there is a team in England that have a women's team that have their own facilities. I don't think think there is one. I don't think so. No, they all share with the men's if they do, right? What about Scotland? No, they don't think they all have any. They all just have to share the men's facilities and they don't have their own built stadiums. Mm -hmm. And they only get to play at the men's stadium like for a handful of games a season, like the big Mm -hmm. games, right? Yeah, Yeah, we, we get that a lot. We get that a lot. We we actually are quite fortunate uh, at Wimbledon. We play at the men's stadium quite frequently, um, which is a lot of fun because obviously, I think it's about, oh, off the top of my head, I'm not entirely sure, but around 10,000 um, seats. Um, so we get we usually get quite a, a big crowd. So that that's really, really fun. That's so cool. That's cool. What's it like playing in front of your crowd and stuff? Yeah, I love it. Do you know what? We get a lot of um, families come down. It's very like sort of like family orientated uh, environment, really. Um, we get a lot of young girls coming down um, and watching, and you know, which is amazing because that's the future of women's football, right? Um, yeah. So when they're sort of on the sideline at the end of the games asking for our autographs. I feel like saying to them, you know what, I'm going to be asking you for your autograph in a few years' time. That's so cool. That is so cool. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Mm. What is like a typical week flag for you, Fran? Um, so a typical, so basically, I'm I've signed myself up to run the London Marathon actually in April. Awesome. Yes. Um, You've which really totally contradicts what around. I just said about not liking running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have a funny costume you're wearing, or are you just going to run it? Um, no. Well, I'm running for a charity, so um, okay. they, they give give me like a bib. Um, a bib. Um, but yeah. So so now I'm training for for the marathon um, as well as playing football. I don't know how my body is going to cope, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> So basically, yeah, so tomorrow I will wake up <clears throat> and I'm working from home tomorrow. So that's quite helpful to be honest because my body is in pieces after today's game. So yeah, so I'll, um, I'll work tomorrow and then in the evening I'll probably go for a light run and um, loosen up my legs a little bit. Tuesday I will work in the daytime and in the evening we train. So we train from... 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., um, which is a really long day considering going from work yeah. to playing football until 10 o'clock and then driving home. It takes me an hour to get to training, so driving home, um, wow. I don't get home until like 11, and then by the time I'm showered and everything, it's just, yeah, it is a long day. Um, I don't see any violins. Can I, can I get a little bit of this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We feel for you. We feel for you. <laughs> um, Wednesday, working in the day, and then I'll probably go for a run again. Um, Thursday, same as Tuesday. So Thursday, working in the day, training at Wimbledon from 8 till 10. And then Friday is my rest day. And then uh, Saturday, I'll rest as well, to be honest, because we'll have a game on the, on the Sunday. Oh, wow. Yeah. And do you find it hard, like... That's quite late. I find like if I go to the gym or exercise late at night, I find it then hard to like calm down to go to sleep. Like, do you find it like interrupts your sleep at all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely find it hard. Do you know what though? I think it helps having the having the hour drive from the drive time because I think that makes me sort of like get it all out out of my system. Yeah. Okay. Um. 
and yeah i'll probably be driving home singing away um <laughs> burn some energy and then yeah be ready for bed <laughs> oh Wow, that's really awesome. I am excited for you to run in the marathon. That's super, super cool. Have you done anything like that before? I've never run a marathon, no. So, yeah, fingers crossed for me, please, girls. Um, <laughs> I, I run it in April. <laughs> I run it in that April. Awesome. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm running for um, a charity that supports uh, bereaved uh, parents that have gone through miscarriages or um, stillbirths or oh, nice. a baby loss charity. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the day. But, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how my body is afterwards. What football team do you support? Uh, Tottenham. Tottenham Hotspur. Tottenham, okay. Tottenham, mm -hmm. okay. What about yourself, Katie? Mm, I support Newcastle United. Yeah, you, well, that's not too far from Scotland, is it? No, it's not. But I support Aberdeen as my hometown, but my English team is Newcastle. Oh, okay. Yeah. My um, my former coach um, actually manages the Aberdeen women. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, uh, Clint, Clint Lancaster. Oh, I'm supposed to be going to see them soon, actually, with my brother, so. Oh, cool. Oh, wicked. Let me know how that goes. Yeah, and Carly, I, will. I know that you you support um, the Houston Dash. Do you support a men's team? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I don't really know any Not or watch any team. men's. <laughs> but we we do have our favorites in the women's champions league or in the in the what's like, We do have our we have our favorite European teams. Ah, oh, hit me with them. I really like Leon and also Chelsea because we, um, we we were watching the documentary, the Chelsea documentary um, that's on YouTube and became okay. I became fan, a fan of like Emma Hayes that way. And which is also why we're excited for her to come to the, to the women's national team here in the US. Oh. Yeah, you must be so excited for that. Yes, so excited. <laughs> She's just very, like, to the point. She's just very real, says it how it is. Yeah, I think she'll be brilliant for you guys. Oh, yeah. Me too. Super exciting. Give them a kick up the backside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Kylie, what, what's uh, your favorite uh, European teams? Yeah, I like Barcelona a lot. They're my favorite. I, I Just watching them, it's just amazing. They won, like, 9-1 yeah. yesterday or 9-2. Like, no goodness gracious. Way. really yeah yeah from eight different goal scorers like wow that's, that's amazing crazy. Mm -hmm. and then Wild. i like watching arsenal like Oof. all the players on there just seem like cool don't characters i don't know what that means <laughs> i don't know if there's like rivalries if there are i don't know explain I'm sorry. It. explain why explain yeah. why that's insulting to france yeah quickly Oh, right, okay. I thought Friend he was why. asking her to explain Friend why, why Arsenal. <laughs> no, Get you through it. <laughs> right, so Tottenham, who I support, are big, big rivals with, with Arsenal. So had you have told me that you're an Arsenal fan, Kylie, I probably wouldn't have come on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. They just uh, beat Arsenal right before the break, so... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That's why. I, no, that's, that's why fair. They're, they're very good sides. Yeah. We saved. We mm. saved that for the end, Fran. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any hobbies off off of the pitch besides maybe running a ha running a full marathon? No, not really. Um, <laughs> which is bad considering I'm 30 years of age now and retirement is fast, fastly approaching. Um, spending time with family, definitely. I, I love spending time with family, my loved ones. Um, and I guess just going out and socialising with my friends as well. What about yourselves? I like going out and like walking, hiking. 
Oh, fun, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. should um you should probably go to Wyoming then, Katie. <laughs> I know. I should, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. I just recently got back into playing soccer because I um hadn't played for a long time and now um I play in like pickup games. But I'm always playing with men in Houston in pickup games, so I really need to find like a women's league or something women's like that. I think. You yeah, should like start a- one. <gasps> yes. Yeah, you're Maybe awesome, Trista. Start- you should start one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. How's your I, How's I your your, your knee, Trista? Um, it is doing pretty well. I didn't have any issues for a long time, and then I think I've tweaked it recently. But I'm still playing. Like this week, I played four nights in a row. Um, so I'm still, wow. still doing okay, but I, um, You're playing more than yeah, me. <laughs> it was a weird, it was a weird week for me. It was like, <laughs> because I haven't, um, I'm on break from work. So I was, I was just joining a lot of pickup games, but yeah, oh, it, cool. um, it was really fun. And I just, like, I've just recently got back into it. So that's definitely something that, um, I'm enjoying doing. Uh, and it's really nice because, like, there's a huge soccer community in Houston. So you can find a pickup game, like, nearly anywhere. And mm-hmm. um, I'm on an app where you can just sign up for games, like, as as you want. So mm-hmm. maybe what I can do is talk to the people who run the app and see if we can get an all-women's game going somewhere mm-hmm. like, um, for women to sign up for in the app. Maybe that's what I should do. That would be amazing. Yeah, that would be so much fun. That's mm-hmm. such a good idea. Yeah, because oftentimes I think, like, most of the time I'm the only, like, girl playing, which is, like, fine, but also it would be nice to play with other other women. Um, and they're, they're out there, mm-hmm. especially in Houston. So I just need to find them. But also I've, um, mm-hmm. I think I've gotten better <laughs> just playing <laughs> so often. So that's fun. Oh, that's brilliant, Truth. Oh, I'm so pleased you're playing. Me too. It's been nice. And Kylie. Kylie came playing with us about a month ago. Yeah. It was great. Did you I enjoy it? The ball oh, yeah, I had a great time. It was really fun. <laughs> oh, the fun the funny thing is is when I started um yeah, Kylie was like, Oh, I wanna you know, like she's been watching soccer, but getting getting into soccer. And Kylie um, is already, like, training for something. I don't know what, but um, she's been training. So she's a fit fit girl. And um, when we when we went out to, like, practice together, <laughs> she was telling me, she was like, oh, don't expect a lot. Like, my foot eye coordinate, I don't know, something. It was like, is not good, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. So, like, really, and I coached um, girls from all sorts of uh, levels, right, because I coached in middle school, um, at the middle school level, like a couple of seasons, a couple of years. And so I didn't expect a lot. And really, Kylie, you would have no idea. It was like her first day ever playing soccer. <laughs> like she did oh, really that's great. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that's so, so cool. In classic Kylie fashion, she um, uh, was really <laughs> modest, which I should have expected. But instead, I really didn't <laughs> expect her to do as well as she did. And she was great. So we'll, we'll see how that goes for Kylie. Will you play again, Kylie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just got to make the time for it and then just yeah. make it a routine. But yeah, well, it's so great. much running around. Play. It's so fun. And I love running around. <laughs> <laughs> she's going yeah. to play in the women's league I create. Oh, that would be perfect, actually. Yeah, that, that sounds really fun. Good. We've gotten pretty into pickleball over here. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah I would We're play. very into pickleball yeah right so that's becoming really big in england pickleball have you played is it is it fun yes so fun Mm -hmm. but is it big in scotland katie uh yeah it's getting bigger like uh my auntie florence who is in her 70s plays it every week and has done for like that's four amazing. Because Sarah and I went 
and played in Cal- no California. There was pickleball courts in pa- California that we passed all the time. And we're like, what is this? We thought it was like an old person's game because there were a lot of older people playing it. And then Sarah was like, oh, I think my auntie Florence plays this. And then when we got to Houston, there was the, what's it called? Bumpy pickle. So we decided mm-hmm. to get into it there. It's a lot of fun, Fran. You should try it. It's good. Okay. I'm going to definitely give it a whirl. Yeah, what I like about it is the learning curve isn't that big. So, like, I tried to get into tennis for a while um, because I thought it was, like, one of those sports. It's nice because you can only play it with, like, one other person. So, you don't – like, soccer's hard, right? You really need, like, a big group of people to play or at least, like, at least six yeah, or seven true. men, right? Yeah. Um, but tennis, you just need, like, one other person. Or if you're playing doubles, so I really tried to get in tennis. I was awful. Um, <laughs> it was sad. But with pickleball – uh, the learning curve was so much smoother and it was a lot easier to pick up. Plus, um, there's some people who are really, really good at it. Um, and so yeah. it, it ranges in levels. But I think in order to be pretty decent at pickleball, um, it doesn't require as much like training as like something like tennis. And that's what makes it so nice. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why it's, everybody's been picking it up because it's something everybody can kind of like play. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll definitely give it a try then. Yeah, after you're done training, let us know how you know, me. every single day after you're done with your <laughs> yes, marathon, seriously. then you need to give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> when I retire, I think. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's a perfect retirement game for you. I think. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Fran, yes. would you ever consider would you ever consider coaching? Uh, do you know what? I always said to myself no <clears throat> because I'd probably just want to I'd probably get carried away and I'd want to just run out onto the pitch and get involved. <laughs> but um as I'm getting older, um because I'm probably uh one of the experienced players in the team, you find yourself talking a lot. Like I just don't stop on the pitch these days and um, it's funny, like during the game today, um, I was I was thinking to myself there and I was thinking, oh my God, I'm talking so much, like I'm probably getting on everybody's nerves. But it got me thinking that maybe, you know, <clears throat> with the experience that I've got, maybe I could get into coaching. I, I'm sure that when I stop playing, I'll miss the game, you know. So, um, yeah, so yeah, that was definitely something that I would think about. Well, I mean, Tris, so you, you coached uh, at middle school. Um, could you see yourself getting back into it? Um, maybe like even as a teacher, I coaching and teaching kind of go hand in hand, I think. Um, and I was coaching because, um, more out of necessity because for the, for the school that I worked for rather than, um, me just like really, really wanting to coach. But I think that if I, had an investment in the team or the community or something like that, it'd be really, really nice to coach. Um, I, I don't know, maybe I think, I don't know. I remember playing with you and you being really vocal when I played with you. So I think that's really funny that that has grown. <laughs> um, but I could see you being a very, I could see you being a very good coach. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. It would be fun. Katie, what about you? Uh, yeah, I think I would like to, like, probably first steps get back into playing, but I could k- coach kids. I did mm-hmm. used to think about that as well, instead of playing, right, is getting to coaching, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you all have a a passion for soccer, so, and obviously where you're watching so much of it as well, like Kylie, you've got a season to get at, at Houston Dash, you know, you're probably learning so much about the game that you probably could, even if it's, you know, um, starting off as kids, you know, coaching them. Yeah. Yeah. Little kids. One thing I did learn is um, I'm not meant for little kids. I taught preschool last year (laughs) for like an hour. Yeah. And it was the worst. I've also coached little kids before, like six-year-olds. Um, oh man, what that happened? Is... So many things, Fran, so many things. But I, I remember one time I was coaching six year olds or something like that. And obviously they don't know a lot. And I just had these boys that were so like energetic. It was wild. I've never seen energy like that in my life. 
And sometimes I would just make them like run around be- because they w- couldn't listen. I'd be like, okay, two laps, you two, like you crazy boys. And they would just start running. Um, it was wild. And I actually did that. Okay, so as a librarian, I did that too with one boy. I One boy, and Kylie knows this because I would talk about this sometimes. I had this boy who had the most energy I've ever seen as a four-year-old. And I would make him run laps in the library, actually, because he wouldn't chill out. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Because otherwise, he was jumping, and it had to be like a controlled form of motion for him otherwise he was like potentially going to injure people or like climb i was oh a librarian last year he would climb the the <laughs> the bookshelves and stuff so i'd be like okay buddy it's a lap time for you man and he would just sprint around and i would like high five him as he went you know <laughs> anyway little kids are not for me <laughs> yeah shout out to that little boy Honestly, that <laughs> period of time of my life was called survival. Pre-K was survival for me. I don't know how much of a teacher, how much of a teacher I was for them. I was just surviving. And then by the time I got to like second grade, like the second graders came in, I was like, oh, finally, these kids, they can learn something because I was just, I don't know how they do it. So anyway, I don't, what I'm saying is um, if you think little kids are going to be easier no, no, it's yeah. not necessary. <laughs> uh, that's why middle school was actually kind of nice because I'd have a lot of kids who didn't know how to play, um, but they were capable of like being independent and listening and like you could teach them the basics without, you know, them being so small. And that was really nice. They- so, <laughs> that was that was my tangent on that. But anyway. <laughs> If you ever, it will, Fran, you have a nephew, you have, oh my gosh, a bunch of nephews and nieces now. Are any of them getting into you. football? Yeah, so Louis, my oldest nephew, who, um, when I was in the US, he was a baby in arms, Trista will remember. Um, he he's is so cute. now, <laughs> he's 12. No. <laughs> yeah, 12. Absolutely not. So, he um, can't be. Yeah. I know. <laughs> So he no. plays. He plays soccer. He's pretty good as well. So um, I go to his games quite a lot. And to be fair, um, when I'm on the sideline, I can't help but sort of like shout things out to him. Um, so I think that age group, like, is that middle school? Twelve. Yes. It'd be like upper, yeah. like maybe like sixth grade, upper elementary to middle school, and that's a good. I think that's a great age to like, yeah, pick up coaching because. Yeah, that would be yeah. nice. Yeah. Aw, that's yeah, so, so cute. Um, yeah, so I got, whenever I don't have a game, um, I tend to go and watch him just to get my football fix, really, for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thank you, Fran, for joining us today on Boots. Uh, we really appreciate it. Also, it was great to just see you and get to get to know even more about you, even as a friend of mine. So that was really, really nice. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I've really, really enjoyed this chat. Yay. Yeah, it was lovely to Thank meet you. you. Yeah. yeah so good to meet you, Kate. Thanks, friend. You Kylie. And Trista, as always, it's just so lovely to see your face. And I'll see you soon, yeah? So fun. Thank yeah. you so much. Thanks, Yeah, Brian. good luck in the marathon. Thank you. (laughs) Bye. Bye, Bye, Fran. Thanks for listening. Hope you all enjoyed hearing from our special guest, Francesca Alley, who plays for our AFC Wimbledon. Please like, subscribe, and leave comments via Instagram or TikTok. Also, like our Instagram reel to see Trista turn up to the Houston Dash game with muffins next season. Bye, y'all. Thanks, Fran. Thank you so much. (laughs) Bye.